what we'll be talking about now is we've got a project that uh, is a web uh, web project. That's what we ended up with PouchDB, but we want to implement it into our Android project. So I want to make you aware of a few things here. It works. Uh, I'm over here on the PouchDB website, and it, it works in these various browsers. We were testing it with Chrome, and it was no problem. Firefox seemed to have a little bit of problem, but maybe we have an older version, and then etc. And then it says, yeah, it works with Android as well. Uh, so here under PouchDB, for more details about that, over on the uh, ab on their about page, there's a link. Let's see. There's a link under the installing section that says for the for past releases. Uh, they've got a GitHub where you can see the code being updated and, and contribute to it. This is a kind of a project where if you feel you can help out the project, here's where you go and you can help out the project. And if your code, you know, really works, it will be implemented into the main branch of the code, the main trunk of the code, and you will have contributed to the code to make it better. That's what GitHub is. How many of you have heard of GitHub before? So if you haven't, it's a place where you can uh, create projects, github.com for free, you create projects, HTML, CSS, Ruby, C++, every language, basically. You put your code out there, you can have people then go, go in and say, oh, there's an error right here, here's how to fix it. Or have people implement it, well, this is a better solution, it'll speed up your processing. If people make a, a copy of the code, so they're not affecting your original code, they make their own copy, they make the changes, and then they give you uh, they, they do a pull request where they say, check out my code, and if it really works, you know, pull it into your main brand, your main trunk, and then other people can use it. So it's its own thing. But here, uh, this is where the creator of PouchDB, Nolan Lawson, is putting out the code, and it's on 3.06, and he's talking about what changes have been made and such, 3.5, etc. So here's all the change log, and then you're able to uh, set up GitHub and fork the code so that you have your own copy of it. 374 people have done so. They, they're all looking at the code and trying to decide what's better. And then uh, some of that stuff gets pulled back into the main branch and then it gets improved. But the reason I bring this up is because this also has this great extra documentation that's not on their main website. So let's check this out. Uh, you should click on the GitHub release page or the actual address is github.com slash pouchdb. That goes over directly to their GitHub page. Other things that they're working on, all their projects, but the main project is the pouchdb project updated two days ago. This is just a little FYI that we're going to look at, but um, here on the right side we've got all of the code issues, so you can say there's a problem with this. And actually I've, I've put in issues before to help fix this, and uh, they've been dealt with. But uh, Wiki here, we've got this, uh, this sort of living manual that is in their GitHub that isn't on their main website. So under Wiki, you could go here and look more, look at other aspects of PouchDB, specifically PouchDB on PhoneGap, which is what we care about. So here it goes on to, uh, so I worked with the author of, of PouchDB to update this because it was a little, a little out of date, but here uh, it talks about uh, PouchDB will try to detect if it's in a Cordova or PhoneGap instance. However, there are a few things that you, the developer, must think about. Note that you must create and use PouchDB inside of OnDeviceReady, because we use WebSQL on PhoneGap, which only becomes available to us after the DeviceReady event. Remember we've talked about DeviceReady a week ago at least, where um, in order for PhoneGap to fully function, we need to make sure that all of the features are available to us. If things are still loading and suddenly we start to do PhoneGap stuff like load the camera, unpredictable stuff might happen, errors and such. PouchDB wants to work once on-device ready 
has been called, the device ready um, trigger has been called. So it's saying everything you want to do in PouchDB should work inside of an on device ready function. And then it talks about something else here. So this is how we're going to need to change our code and notice the example here. Here's a very quick example. Um, create a database, but inside the, the on device ready, this is where we actually say new PouchDB. Create the name of the database. This has got a little bit of error checking also going on. If there's an error on the console, display the error. Other ways to display that error stuff. Successful, then su do successful. And then the rest is just about the same. We've got a database, post stuff into it, display the results in the console. So again, um, the main idea is that we are going to take our code, and it works pretty much as is, but we need to put it all into the onDeviceReady function in our project in Eclipse. Another thing that I ran across, that then I worked with the author to, to make a, a fix for, is that in order for us to... we've got these buttons on the... On, we've got add class and show class, right? In order for those to work, we can't exactly make them work the way we've currently got set up, which is on click show class we have to use some jQuery to access those functions because those functions are inside of on device ready another function so we cannot access a function inside of a function the way we've got it set up so I've got it all figured out and we'll do it together but I'm bringing it to your attention that the github page so that you can look at the latest updates and contribute to it by now we should all have Eclipse set up here. We're going to load up our project from last time, so we'll go to File, Import. Uh, Android, existing Android code into workspace. Mine is on the desktop. I forgot to change the name, but that's okay. Uh, the 21st. So I'm loading up the example project from the last time we worked. We're going to have to deal with changing that name eventually. But this is our project. Inside of assets, www, this is our current project. Okay, so we're going to need to do a few things here. In order for all of PouchDB to work, we need to put the PouchDB.js file into our project. So I'm going to rearrange my screen so that I can see Eclipse over here. And I'm going to find my pouchdbjs file inside of my pouch, you know, whatever we worked on today. Right? This is what we worked on today. So we need to copy, just drag and drop pouchdbjs file into your www folder in there. I suppose we could put it in the JS folder to keep it organized. Or top level. I'll keep it on the top level. So I'm just going to drag PouchDB into the WW folder in Eclipse. It'll ask you, would you like to copy or link? We want to copy the file. We want a copy of it locally to our project. Copy file. Now we should see that PouchDB.js is part of our example project. In a moment, we will then uh, take the code from my pouch and, and put it into our project, but not just yet. We have to think about where within our project would it be useful to add a way for people to save these classes. So I'm just going to run my project one more time to look at it. So 
So uh, create a run configuration if you haven't done so, and view the project. Okay, so we have some customers. Hmm. Right now, customize does that. But in this, so perhaps in this screen here, this about screen, could work, yeah. Let's, um, yeah. Let's say we want to do it there. So we're going to need to find that screen, this about screen. So let's open the index file in Eclipse. We'll create a button there. I believe this is toward the end of our project. Yeah, so at about line 258. This is the section that shows our about screen. So we've got the button that loads up the directions, the button that loads up the customize. We'll make another button after it. So line 273, let's add a break. And then here we'll make a button. Uh, we'll call it Manage Classes, sure. We'll make a button uh, like the other ways we've done. Actually, just for something different, different, why don't we just write the button tag? The button tag will make a button. And usually what we've been doing is we've got a link, and we made it into a button with data roll button and such. We also have the ability to make a button simply with button. That can have a data icon and so forth with inline and everything, but this is create a button. What we do want to do here is give it a unique ID because we won't be able to do on click. On click here has worked for us because we can call a function. But these functions have not been functions inside of functions. Once we do that, we have to deal with the scope of things. Because if we create a function and create a variable inside of the function, we can really only use that variable in that function. It exists in the world of that function. So think about in this room. Think about this room as being a function. Whatever we're talking about here, no one else knows about it in the next room. That's another function. And what we want to do is we want to access a function within a function. So let's say we're in this room and someone's having a conversation over here. That's a function. Uh, and I want to access what's happening inside of that function. It won't work with on click. It'll work in a different way. And the way that we will implement that is via jQuery, and that will work by having an ID, uh, a unique ID for this button, which we'll call uh, pound my classes. Do you normally have a pound in the ID part of 
Oh, I'm sorry, I'm getting my code here mixed up. That is something else. Hold on. No, we would not have a pound sign there. Let me just double check something here. Actually, oh, okay, we're missing something here because what we want to do is display. Uh, oh, yeah. What we want to do is we want to click the Manage Classes button and show us that screen with those inputs and then the show classes and add classes. I'm getting ahead of myself. So here, this is going to be... Um, yeah, we do. Yeah, I was, I was jumping ahead of that. Yeah, so... It's, yeah, we're going to need an href because we are going to go to another screen. I'm thinking that we're already on the other screen. But no, sorry about that. We're going to need the A tag because we are going to go to a screen that displays the input boxes. Button wouldn't do it. So we will set it up as an href. And this is why I had the pound my classes. So I took out the button and instead Took out the button and then instead uh, we're making it an href, we're making it a link. We c if we leave the button, then we would put the a tag around the button. That could work, but. Um, I mean, I think if you put a button, you start getting all the uh, nice formatting that you see right Yeah, either or. Still do the data roll button and get that. Yeah, like we've done before. Uh, that's the way I'm going to do it. But you know, you're both right. We could leave we could leave it as button, and then we get the formatting already. And then we have to add the href, the a tag anyway. So either or. So I'm changing that to say manage classes. It's my classes. We're going to need to create a brand new section to display that and then that's so that we can start to import what we wrote in the pouch db file into that brand new screen. So let's create that button there. Oh, we could. Uh, we'll get back to the styling a little bit later. Uh, we've got we'll do that we'll do the icing on the cake after we make the cake. Do, do you intend to have this page be uh, inserted inside this index.html or as an external document? I'm going to keep it in this document. It's not a lot because remember, based on what we did in Notepad, because it, the body is just, you know, those input fields and the button, show class, add class. So I'll keep it in this file. What we will do in an external file is all of that script. Um, but this is a pop-up. It is a pop-up, but I believe we will be able to call a completely separate screen. That's what I want to do in a separate screen, in a full screen, not a pop-up. I want to display. Hmm. We should be we should be talking. We should be talking to our uh, to our UX designer. He's leading us astray here. Yeah. So. This is the thing about uh, implementing all of this. Okay, let's make it totally easy. We won't do this inside of the the pop-up because yeah, that gets us to the point about what happens when we want to go back. Do we go back to the pop-up or back to the home screen? So this that we've written actually, we're going to move it to the home screen. Let's just do it on the home screen and then we can decide where to put it after that. But um, this code that we wrote here, I'm going to select it and cut it. Don't delete it. Cut it and don't copy it. Cut it, or else you have two copies of it. Cut it. And we'll put it in the um, in the home screen. So that would be up online uh, somewhere at the top. We've got those buttons there to take a photo. So probably before that. Before that, exactly. So we've got that info button. We've got this secret button. I. Don't remember what that does, but anyway, after that. So we'll say we'll put this into line 64.
So cut what we made and put it into line 64 so that it's on the home screen, just easy to get to. That'll eliminate some of our issues that perhaps we might have gotten into if we kept it in the pop-up. And just for something different, I want to add a transition also. Data transition slide up. So this will give us the effect that when you tap the button, a new screen slides up uh, to accomplish something, something different. The other screens where we might have had a transition of, uh, I don't know, what else did we do? Fade and flow or whatever, all of those types of transitions have an inherent meaning that we've given them. This one has a different transition so that it lets people know something else is going to happen on this screen. So that's a little bit, again, part of our UX, our user experience. So we will create a My Classes screen. We'll do it at the very end of the document. Can we get rid of this in secret? <laughs> uh, yeah, you can comment it out. <laughs> What was our secret anyway? What did that do? I forgot already. Oh, the alert. Yeah. Okay. That's not a very good secret. So yeah. Comment it out or delete it. I want to create a new section. Remember, uh, in the previous class, or at some point, we uh, we upgraded our... We Remember, we were using divs and data rules and all of that. And then we upgraded to the HTML5 semantics of using sections and articles and all of that. So I want to create a new section, a new page for my <clears throat> my classes screen. So based on this idiom here of creating a section, go to line 278, give yourself space after that, and we will create a section, slash section, data role, page, ID, my classes, We want the header data roll header some text inside of the header in an H one. Is it header or head? Well it the tag is head. No, I'm sorry, is it? No header. Here, let me confirm back here. It is yeah, it has actually the HTML. Oh, header yes. is, a is the HTML5 um, semantic element, yes. So header. So it's twice here. Header slash header. And then uh, data role, header. And we'll add an H1 at the top there, and we'll write my classes. We want a, uh, we would do a div for uh, content, but now we will do uh, an article of data role content.
So we're just setting up um, a button on the home page so that when you click it, a new screen appears. At this point, save it and run it. Obviously, we're still a little ways off. Save it and run it, and um, let's see that at least you've got your button on the home page. You click the button, a new screen slides up. Not very much content is in it yet, but that's what we're going to get from our uh, PouchDB file that is complete at this point. So save this, run this, and let's take a break. Um, 10 minutes. It's 8.21. We'll be back at 8.31.